Hi everyone, welcome to Met Chico. Today we're gonna talk about sepsis. Sepsis is an acyclic polyetiologic infectious disease caused by presence of infectious agents in blood. Acyclic means it doesn't have a specific cycle like other infectious diseases. Once infectious agents enter our bloodstream, they might lead to the development of sepsis. Sepsis is polyetiologic but monopathogenetic. Polyetiologic means it is caused by multiple different etiology, but all of them have the same pathogenic mechanism that we will talk about later in this video. Sepsis is not contagious like other infectious disease. What does it mean? It means that you won't get sepsis if the patient infected with sepsis coughs next to you or you can't transmit it via air drops to other people around you. During the pathogenesis of sepsis, bacteria produce toxin which will lead to severe overreactive responses in our bodies. Etiology of sepsis consists of Staphylococcus, Streptococcus, Pneumococcus, Typhoid bacilli, Meningococcus, and so on, but except viruses. Clinical peculiarity of sepsis consists of generalization of infection. What does generalization mean? It means that sepsis doesn't just happen and affect only one specific organ. Because it happens within the bloodstream, it affects multiple systems in our bodies and leads to general malfunctions of different systems such as central nervous system, cardiovascular system, urinary system, and so on. Another clinical peculiarity of sepsis is inadequate reactions of our bodies, which means hyperreaction to causative agents. Now let's talk about immunological peculiarity of sepsis. Immunity is not produced in sepsis, which means that there is no production of specific antibodies during the disease period. Under the condition of increasing reactivity to causative agents, it will make human bodies react to agents inadequately, causing the development of mediator chaos, in which we have the hyperreaction of macrophages. This will stimulate the immune system and increase its responses. Exhaustion develops, leading to the multiple collapses of different systems. Sepsis causes local and general changes morphologically. Local changes of sepsis consist of the development of focus of brutal inflammation. Sepsis spreads through lymphatic and blood vessels leading to the development of lymphangitis, lymphothrombosis, lymphadenitis, and phlebitis, thrombophlebitis. General changes consist of degeneration, inflammation, and hyperplastic changes. Sepsis affects parenchymal organs like liver, kidneys, myocardium, and so on, leading to dystrophic necrosis. Inflammatory changes consist of hemorrhagic syndrome, vulvulitis, and polyp ulcerative endocarditis. In hyperplastic changes, we have bone marrow hyperplasia, flappy red cherry spleen, or septic spleen. Clinical morphological forms of sepsis consist of four types septicemia, septicopiemia septic bacterial endocarditis, and chronic septicemia. The main difference between septicemia and septipemia is that in septicemia, metastasis does not happen, but it is present in the second type which is septicopiemia. 
In septicemia, we will see the absence of purulent metastasis, hemorrhagic syndrome, and hyperplasia of bone marrow and septic spleen. In septicopiemia, we will see the presence of purulent metastasis. It can lead to several complications, for example, pericarditis, peritonitis, paranephritis, phlegmon, and abscesses. In septic bacterial endocarditis, it is characterized by septic lesion of cardiac valves. It has two types primary septic endocarditis and secondary septic endocarditis. And the last type of sepsis is chronic septicemia. It has the development of amyloidosis, cachexia, and brow atrophy due to accumulation of lipofuxin. Manifestations of sepsis consist of fever, chills, breathing difficulties, diarrhea and vomiting, confusion and slurred speech, low blood pressure and elevated heart rate, dots that appear on the skin, low urine production, and severe pain and muscles fatigue. Treatment of sepsis consists of oxygenation till the O2 saturation is above 75%. Fluid resuscitation to maintain the patient's blood pressure. If fluid fails to reach the minimal blood pressure, not epinephrine is a crucial choice. Antibiotics fail because of the presence of abscesses, so doctors have to locate abscesses and drain them out. Blood culture is conducted to identify the causative agents to provide proper antimicrobial drugs. For example, here we have carbapenem or vancomycin. Now let's have a quick revise about sepsis. Sepsis is an acyclic polyetiologic infectious disease. It is monopathogenetic. It is not contagious. It happens because of toxin production by bacteria and immunity is not produced in sepsis. Etiology of sepsis consists of Staphylococcus and Streptococcus but except viruses. Sepsis causes local changes and general changes which consists of endocarditis, vomvulitis, and septic spleen. Clinical morphological types of sepsis consist of four types, septicemia, septicopiemia, septic bacterial endocarditis, and chronic septicemia. Manifestations of sepsis consist of fever, chills, breath difficulties, diarrhea, vomiting, slurred speech, low blood pressure and elevated heart rate, dots on skin, low urine production, muscles pain and fatigue. Treatment of sepsis consists of oxygenation, fluid resuscitation, not epinephrine, abscesses drainage, and antimicrobial agents, for example, capapenem or vancomycin.